So what's Intel gonna do next? The clock is ticking. If you're thinking about buying or building your next computer, try to wait for at least a month. So far in Ship Wars, we've shown how ARM processors from Qualcomm, Nvidia, and Samsung are getting exponentially faster every year. Many people don't need the latest x86 PC to get stuff done. While I hope to go over what AMD is bringing to the table, this 18th episode of Ship Wars is all about the latest features in the upcoming fourth generation of Intel Core processors. The redesigned microarchitecture of Haswell hints that Intel isn't too worried about AMD. It's really worried about the growth of ARM-based platforms. Intel's bread and butter has always been the PC market. The industry was hoping for a boost from the recent Windows 8 launch, but instead PC shipments had the worst double-digit percentage declines in history. And this isn't something new. This is actually the fourth quarter in a row that PC shipments have declined. In the past, a new Windows operating system correlated with a big uptick in PC sales. But the game is changing as power-efficient ARM-based system-on-a-chips are taking over. Thumbs up if you're watching this from a mobile device. But if you're subscribed to this channel, like me, you probably want to make sure you're buying into the best computer platform for the job. While ARM dominates low-power computing, and AMD is pushing heterogeneous multi-threaded performance in gaming, let's see what Intel, the king of efficient single-threaded performance, is bringing to the market in 2013. Intel updates its chips on a so-called TikTok cycle. Let's break it down. A tick is a big improvement in manufacturing process and production. For example, Ivy Bridge is built on a more power efficient 22 nanometer photolithographic process. Photo what? It's a new process where a pristine 12-inch wafer is exposed to patterns of intense light that etch the intricate chip design into the wafer. With Ivy Bridge, the most important production innovation is the introduction of 3D transistors. By stacking transistors, Intel crammed more stuff into a smaller, more power-efficient chip. Architecturally, since Ivy Bridge is like its predecessor, it's backwards compatible with Sandy Bridge sockets and motherboards. Except it has a better integrated GPU in the high-end chips. On the other hand, after a tick comes a talk, using the same production process as the previous generation, except it has a new redesigned microarchitecture. Haswell is a talk. Straight out of Oregon from a new fabrication facility, Haswell is built using the same 22 nanometer 3D transistor production process as its predecessor, Ivy Bridge. So why should I wait for Haswell? The best way to explain the new chip design is in terms of how it benefits three different types of users. Overclockers, enthusiasts like PC builders, and mobile users. If you're an overclocker, Haswell might be for you. For overclockers, heat is always a problem, but with an Intel-designed voltage regulation module on the chip itself, it will now be cooled by an improved heatsink, perhaps allowing for cooler performance at higher clock speeds. Overclocking is all about tweaking the multiplier or the base clock to get faster performance. First, an unlocked core multiplier might help the Intel PCs cooled with liquid nitrogen beat AMD's overclocking record, while others might get a performance boost. And second, for people who want to tweak even more, the higher base clock tolerance lets people raise clock speeds possibly without the normal instability problems. Now if you're a PC builder who just wants a future-proof computer, with Haswell, Intel is also introducing a new socket, or in other words, a new housing for the chip. Intel has traditionally supported these socket styles because they let enthusiasts customize their PC builds. If a problem happens, it's easier to remove and replace the chip. Future motherboards will have to support these updated sockets for desktops and high-performance notebooks. Also, Haswell supports a much faster version of USB 3.0. But the best features of Haswell will benefit mobile users and sleek all-in-one PCs. First, the chip can now idle at 800 MHz, reducing power consumption. Second, a better integrated GPU will better handle high-resolution screens in notebooks and desktops. In notebooks, where battery life is crucial, the lack of a separate discrete GPU should mean less power consumption overall. This will especially benefit smaller form factor computers the most, where batteries are necessarily smaller. But not all Haswells are created equal. The cheaper chips will have the basic GT1 GPU, while most models will have the mid-range GT2 GPU. Most PC builders and overclockers should probably look at one of these models since they'll be running more powerful dedicated GPUs anyway. For mobile users, the sweet spot will be the GT3 and above. With 40 execution units, Intel targeted the performance of NVIDIA's GT650M. The top of the line GT3e will even integrate some DRAM to act like a fourth level of cache in the chips designed for all-in-one desktop PCs. Taking a page from AMD's strategy, this DRAM should act like a unified pool of memory for the CPU and integrated GPU. But these top-of-the-line 
Haswell GPUs will only be available in a BGA socket. Wait, what is this socket thing you speak of? The socket is the thing that connects the processor to the circuit board. A BGA socket is actually soldered onto the circuit board. So while this limits customization and raises the cost of maintenance in the future, it's actually a good thing for thin and light computers because the design results in less heat and more precise voltage regulation. There will be one version for all-in-one desktop builds, one version for Ultrabook-style laptops, and one extremely efficient chip, possibly for tablets. But Intel is working on more than just hardware. For developers, Intel released some software extensions to entice game developers to optimize games for Haswell integrated GPUs. For DirectX, Haswell supports order-independent transparency for game developers to design more complex scenes using smoke, hair, or foliage without taxing the limited memory. Lastly, Haswell has hardware graphics support for DirectX 3D 11.1 and OpenGL 4.0. But what if I just want a computer now? Should I get an Ivy Bridge system or wait for Haswell? Overall, Haswell is expected to have up to a 15% performance boost. And you don't have to wait too long. On June 3rd, Intel is announcing the chips designed for powerful desktops and quad-core notebooks. I could release an updated Chip Wars episode that compares Intel and AMD chips once they're released. Let me know by hitting that like and subscribe button. And here's a customary shout out to all the latest subscribers. I always try to make videos that answer any questions or feedback you leave below in the comment section. This will be an important year for the PC industry, because for a growing number of people, ARM-based mobile devices might be good enough. AMD got a lifeline with contracts to supply the next generation of gaming consoles. For Intel, the clock is definitely ticking.